You ready? Okay, I want to make sure that uh, when Chris talks, we're not getting echoes here. Okay, cool. Hey, hey, Leah. Great. Hi. Hi, Chris. Oh, hi, Chris. You, you look like you've been kidnapped and you're, you're uh, calling in from the van. <laughs> yes, I, I'm actually, uh, I've got, what's that called when you begin to fall in love with your kidnappers? Uh, no, yeah, stop <laughs> home, home syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Twice and you're being Yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway, well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the AI Salon. Leah, hello. Good hello, to see hello, you. Hello, Kyle. Good to see you. You see, we, we talked earlier, and, and uh, it sounds like you've not been paying to AI for paying attention to AI for two weeks. Shame on you. Well, I haven't, and it's like four years. Like, I, <laughs> I know <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> two weeks off uh, AI, and all of a sudden, I go back to just shooting analog photos, and look what happens the whole world changes again. But and it's exciting because yeah, two weeks ago I was in San Francisco, and now I'm in New York, and I really like this kind of jet setting way of photography and AI all mixed up together. So that's Pretty good cool. but you're doing you're doing just the actual camera with actual people yes. right the actual photo digital so you know in the photo world it's not totally analog it is yeah. digital photography but yeah it's digital so it's very 2022 it's so 2022 you know it's so last year <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh my name is kyle shannon uh this is leah faston we're your co host mm -hmm. for the salon hey, everybody here locally thanks Hello. for coming in person it's cool to see it um the AI Salon, if you're new to this, is a community of people. I think we're going on six months, Leah. We That's started nuts. this in December. I know. We're, we're in That's June. Crazy. I can't believe it's been six months. It's it crazy. Kind of and it's six years, though, in AI time. Like, I know. Like, no, it's, it's what we talked about. Absolutely incredible. Um, but, but the whole idea here is we, we started this just to create a community of people curious about AI and trying to figure this stuff out and might be excited, might be terrified. and um, if you're paying attention, you should be both. It's, yeah, it's, it's where I am right now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what are, what are the thoughts you have, Leah? Um, I I am astonished that it's been six months. And when I think about the first generations I was doing six months ago and the conversation we had about stable diffusion and how impossible that felt and now how that seems like it was so long ago. And now we have things like Firefly being embedded in Adobe and we have, um, just leaps and bounds of things where generative AI is becoming so much more accessible just in six yeah. months. It's mind blowing. Yeah, no, it's just amazing. Um, the other thing about the salon is um, we, we try to be nice to each other. So we, we put together some values. Like we want this to be a nice community where people are generous and things like that. So Leah, are you, uh, you want to pop through the values for us? Yep. I'm on it. We, uh, curiosity, we stay curious, eager to learn new things, generous, so we share our knowledge. We're all coming from different places and different backgrounds. We want to support that and see where we can intersect and grow. Exploration, we're excited to try new things and take risks and embrace uncertainty and ambiguity, which seems uh, very important right now with AI. Collaboration, the coolest thing about this group is all of the different places we come from, and it's really neat to see where we intersect. And where we intersect, some really cool things can happen. Um, and inclusion. We are actively seeking out and value diverse perspectives and experiences, recognizing our differences, make us stronger. And then empathy, uh, I think empathy and what makes us human, understanding each other as humans seems more important than ever, especially with AI. Exactly. Humans matter. Yeah. Awesome. Humans do matter. And, yeah. and to that end, uh, what we like to do is go around, introduce ourselves. Um, you have 60 seconds to introduce yourself. We want to hear... Um, who you are, what you do, and what your relationship is with AI. So you might just be dating. You might have a more significant relationship. We, we want to know what's your level of love. I'm gonna snuffle with AI. Okay. Exactly. Um, also remember um, to raise hands, and yeah. um, Ken will call on you, and Ken will uh, let you know when it's been a minute. And it's uh, not personal. It's just that we have a lot to do in one night. Yeah, but. Ken, he'll take you out. If yeah. you're friend, like, he will take you out. Do not mess with Ken. So yeah, if you're remote, hit the raise hand button in the bottom row. It's the second one over from the hang up button. Um, so just raise your hand. And then why don't we go here in uh, in Denver? But wait, let me change my background. And I'll sort of point my camera around. Well, it's fun acting like a ghost. Yeah, no. 
going to do that. And then who wants to go first? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Kasim. I am a software architect. I specialize in developing applications, both for iOS and macOS operating systems. I'm very interested and currently focused on utilizing machine learning models on edge devices, more specifically on the mobile. Such as on, on the what? On mobile. Oh, mobile. Yeah, both iOS and Android. So, uh, you know, for two specific fields, the automatic speech recognition systems and video creation tools that deal with real-time um, live streaming pixel technologies to create, hopefully, open source tools for the community. So, Great. Great. Terrific. And if you okay. could hear in demo, because I don't know how the the, uh, the mics are, just speak up if you could so everyone can hear. So, you want to go? Sure. Great. <laughs> So, hi, I'm Jason Sayer. I'm brand new in town. And, oh, nice. Uh, just kind of learning about, uh, about the folks around me, trying to connect with the community out here. Uh, for the past two years, I've been uh, running the Applied Science Bureau, so doing just robotics research. Um, so kind of a self styled roboticist. And so, leveraging machine learning into that, uh, whether that's computer vision, abstract, inverse kinematics. Um, I'm kind of looking for a job, looking for a place uh, nice. in Denver. So, <laughs> trying to find your peeps. I'm where, trying to find my people. Nice. Yeah. Where would you come from? I'm Tennessee. Oh, nice. Cool. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, I'm Tyler. Also looking for a job. <laughs> I'm in <laughs> content marketing, copywriting. Uh, looking to sort of make that jump from just writing everything to more a strategy level. And I'm here today to learn about all kinds of other different types of ways people are using AI. Um, you know, I know that there is a design aspect, graphic stuff that I haven't touched too much, but definitely played with, um, you know, trying to create content from a lot of these other uh, major tools. So it's very exciting to see what's going on and um, hopefully I can learn a lot of new things today. <laughs> Oh, um, I'm Ken, I'm one of the organizers here, and I am also looking for a job. <laughs> AI salon and employment. <laughs> uh, I'm, I have a particular interest in AI and automation, and which is why I joined this group. Uh, I love to learn about AI tools in particular and how it can save time and uh, Improve efficiency, and uh, I'm really just trying to, I guess, learn everything I can. It's all overwhelming sometimes, and so uh, you know, I just try to take as take in as much as I can and help wherever I can. Beautiful. Uh, Brad Perkins, I'm a digital product strategist and designer. Uh, in the process of starting up my own agency, back with AI workflows and processes. Um, I figured it's easier to start from scratch than change current agency <laughs> models. Um, it's a good call. So uh, really feel AI is just going to help support uh, kind of new work streams and workflows um, and possibly change how we work for companies moving forward. So, uh, good hey, uh, I'm Drea. I am an organizer here at Apple the AI salon, um, also our generative architects. And I was a, have been a professional writer um, for a long time, kind of transitioning out. And I'm now um, working on a startup that has to do with AI and mental health. And guess what? That has a lot to do with language. So, um, so I'm really fascinated by what I keep learning about AI and how it, how language itself affects how we think. Because all of that stuff ties together. So. Um, Really excited for today's talk by Jane. <laughs> hey everybody, Steve Gargiulo. Uh, I run a small professional services firm that focuses on talent development, about 18 of us, and we've been playing a lot with various LLMs, mostly chat GPT, and just using it to create shitty first drafts of everything we do and try and make that part of the process. You can, um, you can create the shitty first draft really quick. Yes, yeah. you can. <laughs> uh, and so, and that's great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, 
push work down as much as possible, including to machines, and just trying to be smart about it and learn. So that's great. Hi, my name is Jane Endicott. Uh, I'm a content writer and organizer and also the speaker for tonight. Um, I've been using ChatGPT for my job. Uh, actually, ChatGPT does my job now. And um, kind of just exploring the creative side of it. Um, I'm just really excited to learn. I mean, like Kyle said, there's so many different people here with different angles and really just enjoy meeting people and talking about it. So you're a robot babysitter now? Basically, I'm, I'm the operator. <laughs> you're the <laughs> chat GPT operator. <laughs> really excited to hear you have to say tonight, Jane. Thank you. Thank yeah, that'd be great. I'm John. I'm a maintenance man of Catalyst Building here. I uh, drink by the bottle. <laughs> I am also creating an AI uh, based uh, platform for. Helping maintenance workers like myself do day to day jobs and get certifications. Maintenance mentor! That's right. All right, beautiful. Welcome, everybody. Look at online. So if you haven't, uh oh, what do they do? We're good. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, if, you, uh, if you haven't raised your hand, raise your hand and uh, Ken will call on you. You got 60 seconds and do what the folks here in Denver did and tell us where you are as well. All right, looks like we're going to start with Alan. Alan should know. Alan, you there? Are you muted? Alan, is your mic on? Alan, you with us? <laughs> Eddie, are you okay? Okay, I guess we'll move on to Brian Thompson. Hey, nice to meet everyone. First time uh, with the group. I'm currently a software salesman at a Series A startup, but I'm also building um, a sales enablement tool, which I've so far scripted completely with ChatGPT, and I don't have any Python knowledge. So I like looked up a few YouTube videos, whatever, but essentially, like, yeah, I have a working MVP minimum viable product that I'm uh, getting feedback from customers. Uh, and essentially, yeah, I'm uh, also looking for a technical co-founder who is uh, really good at Python and backend and all that kind of stuff. So that's a little bit about me. Awesome. Welcome. So, so you're looking for someone who actually does has done Python before. My, my first uh, epiphany with ChatGPT was writing a Python application in like 90 minutes. I've never written a line of Python either. So, so welcome. Welcome. Laura, you're up next. Hey everybody, uh, I am in Littleton, so not too far from you all, but a little too far for me to uh, make my way up to, I think you're in Rhino, is that right? Yep. yep. Rhino area tonight? Very yep. cool, very cool. Well, I am, yeah, I am a graphic designer. Uh, I've been doing that for about 17 years now. Um, everything from web design to print, digital. I also like to do digital illustration, uh, you know, any, anything artsy, crafty. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of a traditional, you know, a traditional designer. I'm a bit of a purist. Uh, I like to stick with the basics and that's what I will always tout, especially when it comes to brand and sticking with your why. Uh, but I'm open and very curious about chat, you know, all the AI stuff we've been seeing the past few months. Um, so I'm opening up my mind to that and that's what how I found you guys. So I'm hoping oh, to connect awesome. more and yeah, that's me. Welcome. Welcome. All right, thanks for that. Kay Hudson, you're up next. Kay Hudson, you're up next. You're muted, Kay. Right, you're muted, Kay. Hello. Oh. Hi, I know. I was trying to toggle it off. Sorry about that. Um, hello, thank you for welcoming in, me into this group. I've been watching Kyle on TikTok religiously. <laughs> <laughs> it's good and you gotta stop making fun of yourself nah never i, I leave with shame. shame is my love language oh i love that um so i'm also gen x so bitter um so i'm from minneapolis i work for a ginormous company and as far as relationship building with generative ai we're building an emotional connection right now cool awesome welcome that immersion language club you're up next 
Yeah, I apologize. One of the things that I was going to introduce with is that I feel really confident in Google Suite and I can't change my name. In this. So uh, my, I'm Kelsey Payne, Kelsey as in Kelsey Grammar, Kelsey Payne. Uh, I am more in the Lakewood area, closer to Golden than Denver proper, but um, I have for past three, four years since COVID hit, been building a language program and teaching it uh working on uh trying to bring immersion language learning into a virtual world and with the rise of this ai uh such as chat gpt which i'm using and learning a lot about in terms of prompting prompt engineering is really such an exciting field uh i'm very interested to see what how to steer things like my private business into the direction of language learning coupled with uh, AI conversation and immersion. So, and I'm new to the group too. Great, welcome. Welcome. So that, Daniel Ritchie, you're up. Hello, AI Salon. Um, I'm actually uh, across the street. I maybe <laughs> don't have a good excuse for for not being there, but I'm I'm literally across the street from the AI Salon at uh, the Brainwave Studio here, and uh, I'm the founding member of Brainwave Collective, which is a group of not just AI enthusiasts, but people who wanna actually take their domain and turn it into something that they can monetize. So we're gonna to learn together, we're gonna to build together, and we're gonna share in a collective success is the plan. Uh, also have an announcement for uh, people who are here in Denver on June 22nd, Thursday at 6 p.m. at X Denver, we're gonna have an AI mixer. So people who are not only part of or interested in the Brainwave Collective, but AI in general, and we're going to get a bunch of people together and have a good time. So come join us if you can. Do, do you want real people? <laughs> That's, I mean, robots. real people, I my, robots, my avatar. avatars. <laughs> we we send our avatars? Okay. Yeah. Daniel, whatever what, what whatever you've you got, you all are welcome. Can you give those details again? So that'll be the 22nd, Thursday the 22nd. So just a little over two weeks out, 6 p.m. at X Denver. All right, thank you. Uh, David Mondragon, you're up next. Hey there, uh, Dave Mondragon. I am a product management and I have um, been in speech dictation, which we've been building language models for a dozen years and cloud computing for more than that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, um, I think this, um, the, the AI stuff here has created a problem for my favorite joke, um, which is um, machine learning is written in Python uh, and AI is written in PowerPoint. Uh, so <laughs> it, stopped, it stopped working now, right? Because AI is actually working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so, right. So at any rate, uh, yeah, uh, Dave Majigan, pleasure, pleasure to meet everybody. All right, thanks. Ted Henning, you're up. Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Ted Henning, I'm outside of Boston. I'm in uh, a corporate uh, training strategy and design. Um, been playing around with a lot of different tools for a while. I've been, I was a, uh, been with the salon for, for a few months. Um, played with a really cool tool this week called artflow.ai. Um, and they have a new thing, something called uh, Hero Story. And you literally put in three short little prompts who you're, like you, you, your superhero is, what, what their age is, uh, what, what their uh, gender is, and then what their superpower is. And it creates basically a, a, a series, it creates the character that creates a series of storyboards. Um, and then it creates a, a, a VO that goes with it. So basically the out, final output is sort of an animated, not really animated so much, but just a series of, of, uh, of still images with a, sort of the hero story underneath it. Uh, they always wow. create, oh. yeah, it's, I mean, it's. Would you put that link into the chat, Ted? Sure, of course. Thank you. That's uh, awesome. That's me. Thank you. All right, thanks, Ted. Jeff Gray, you're up. Hello, I'm Jeff Gray. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, another Minnesota person here in the, in the room. Um, I've been working on a startup uh, that, with AI and apparel and, and working on a solution for um, AI art and printing on um, 
physical products. And so I have officially launched the, uh, the business and I'm working for, um, you know, uh, basically a, a sample a tool that I can uh, start experimenting with. And um, I'm very excited to get it rolling. Thank you very much. Congrats. That was yeah, just a dream when you, when you started with us. It's great. It like was. a month and a half ago or something. Jeff, you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Jeff. Cindy Hugh, you're up. Hi, everyone. My name is Cindy. Um, I'm an actuary in a life insurance company. And uh, right, right now, I know people are doing a lot of fun things with AI, but my job is more in the basic fundamental level, all interesting level. So I work with um, prediction uh, analysis and uh, data uh, pattern detection. And uh, um, I'm currently in my master program in data science. And I'm looking forward to um, meet with other people and see what else we're doing with AI. Um, and I'm, I'm also in, looking for a side um, shuttle because my current role is not very data emphasized. OK, uh, that's about me. Um, looking forward to um, uh, connecting with everyone. Thank you. Welcome, okay. Cindy. Nice to have you. Welcome, Cindy. Appreciate it. Uh, Chris Needham, you're up next. Hey guys, my name's Chris. I've known Kyle Shannon now for 27 years, which is crazy to say. Crazy. Um, and I've known Leah now for a year plus. My first time at the salon, thank you for having uh, this amazing forum. I'm in New York looking for a job. And I met today with the chief of design at IBM. And he told me that they've just literally created a new center of excellence around curating um, prompts to build prompt libraries. Guess how many people are in that um, new center of excellence at IBM? 1,000 employees. Jeez. Just yeah. focusing data scientists and creatives <laughs> working together to create wow. a for IBM. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's, it, you know, I kind of feel like Microsoft has just, you know, gone full in on this. When those big companies decide to do it, you know, you can just toss a thousand people at, go write some prompts. Like, <laughs> <that's pretty intense. laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Chris. Nice to have you here. Yeah, yeah good to have you, Chris. Uh, Eric Roland, uh, you're up. Okay, yes. Um, can you hear me? Yep. You can, okay, yes. Uh, I'm uh, residing in Inglewood, Colorado. I'm, I'm actually on the road. I'm uh, figuring I would uh, come in just before work. I have to. Uh, out of the meeting at 5.45 or 6. But I'm interested in uh, artificial intelligence related topics. Uh, I'm involved with a lot of meetup groups and uh, just pop in on one and you know, learn as much as I can. Welcome. Awesome. Nice to have you here. Appreciate that. Thanks. George yeah. Williams, your turn. How's everyone doing? My name is George Williams. I am in Washington, D.C., where I am a press secretary in local government. Um, I'm interested in the intersection between AI and communications. I think it fundamentally changes the way that we create and consume information and the opportunities which exist to do more sort of and do better and do it faster are really interesting. Welcome, George. Really nice to have you here. Welcome back. Uh, Eric both in Europe. Eric's muted. Eric, you're muted. Yeah, that was that was oh, me. Who did you oh. call before? No, yeah, I'm not oh. sure. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Sorry about Eric, that. Eric Roland. Eric or Eric Roland. Okay. Eric Eric Roland, oh. go ahead. Yeah. Take this chance. <laughs> yeah. Hey. hey, everybody. Um, great to be here again. Uh, I was just get, I've kind of figured out recently that I, I've gotten in over my head work wise. So if anybody out there is like well versed in Python, um, maybe more on the data science side of things and is, you know, doing things with LLMs, um, you know, and, you know, if you can build deep learning models, things like that, those are all super helpful for me. So if you'd like, uh, please get in contact with me. I'll put my email in the in the channel. I'm 
I won't go into all the different projects, but it's it's a lot and I can't do it all myself. So I'll just leave it. Congrats, by the way. That's great. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, thank you. All right, Eric Center, your turn. What's with all these Eric's? Hello, There's everyone. too many Eric's. I am I'm the third <laughs> Eric. I'm the third Eric. In a row. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, I slept for about four hours last night, so there we go. <laughs> so uh, maybe in, in a couple of weeks I'll have more to say, but I'm just, I just enjoy being here. And every, every time we meet, I get many ideas and it sustains me until the next meeting. So thanks everybody for contributing. <laughs> Nice to have you here. I hope we don't put you to sleep tonight. But if we do, I hope you sleep before. Welcome back, Eric. Uh, CJ Fletcher, you're up. Can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, my name is officially Eric now. So I want to be called back <laughs> for the rest of the evening. I've missed you guys. Uh, I, I'm actually, I had a surgery on the graphic designer hand, so I wasn't there. Um, but I'm here now. I'm a graphic designer for the Arc of Jefferson County, uh, based uh, home based out of Aurora, Colorado. And this week I am in hot Arizona at the Creative Pro Week uh, Designers Conference, where I'm arguing the validity of AI art with senior designers and uh, making, oh, them wow. very, making them very mad at me because I have very salient points with them. Uh, I have, wow, interesting. I, yeah, yeah. I, I've moved into the realm uh, where I have an art show coming up. So now I've changed my title to Generative Artist. Wow. And uh, that is where I'm going to go. And uh, I am happy, happy, happy to see all your faces again. I've missed you. And I can't wait to be back physically in two weeks and go get some crazy food over at the other place that we go to. Well, it's nice to see. Where in Arizona are you? Uh, we, I'm, in a, I'm in a really swanky resort, like the, the Sheraton Grand Wild Horse Casino Wild Pass out in Chandler, Arizona. Yeah, so, sure. Uh, I lived in Tempe wow. for eight years, so enjoy I, it. Oh, wow. I'm, yeah, I'm born and raised here in Arizona, oh, okay. so it's, like a, it's a reunion for me. Excellent. Nice to have you back. Oh. All right, and looks like Sky, you're up next. Hey, guys, Sky Kyer, a recent transplant from Denver back in September, currently in Burlington, Vermont. Sort of wow. what that's is for a digital nomad at my age. Um, I uh, work as a copy editor and a proof eater with proofreader. I, I'm a proof eater sometimes, too, believe me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but a proofreader with unsettling books. Um, I'm here because, um, you know, frankly, evolution is undefeated and Luddites have won nothing. Uh, yep. Basically, AI in the book publishing world is going to lock horns in a major way. It's not like corporate content. This is like copyrights and all kinds of fun. So um, I, I intend to be ahead of the curve rather than dragging my heels and telling everybody to follow the rules and get in line at the water fountain. Kyle, Leah, thank you very much for holding the space and anybody else I'm leaving behind. Jason from Tennessee, hang in there. This, this is a good group of people to hook in with. And uh, there's a lot more community here you may know already. I'm originally yeah. from Tennessee, and I can tell you, you're going to be fine. But uh, thanks, thanks for holding the space. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks That's for awesome. being here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if anyone uh, joined while we were doing intros, just raise your hand um, if you want to. If you want to introduce yourself, it looks like we're out of raised hands. I know some some people popped in, like Drew. And there's Jason. So, yep. go ahead, Jason. Hey everyone, um, Jason Young, and I'm in Atlanta, and um, I'm actually um, a general partner in a small ed tech VC fund, and we're just in the very early stages of just trying to understand the impact that AI will have on the education space and, and how it can be used to improve um, educational outcomes, particularly for um, public K-12 education. So. I'm excited to be here and um, yeah, just excited to learn and, and, and connect with folks. Thank you. Nice to have you you're here, welcome. Jason. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, Shane, you're up next. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Shira Rahani. I'm from uh, Lisa Viejo, California. I'm a recent uh, college grad graduate from University of Irvine with a bachelor's degree of economics. And I work uh, as a product 
project manager. And why I participate uh, here is because uh, I've been hearing AI being such a big, like, a big thing. It's kind of like as, as big as like internet when it first exists. And I really want to learn more about it. So I look forward to be here and what you provide to us. Welcome. Econ major as well. I was an econ major. Yeah. Oh, really? That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and I've been I've been given a couple of talks lately, and, and one of the big points that I'm doing is I, I think um, 2023 is the new 1995. So the parallels between the early days of the web and the early days of AI are are quite clear to me, anyway. So definitely, definitely. Uh, Jason Young, did we did we did we get Jason? Oh, I think so. Jason Young. Hey. Oh no, that was me. I I, I went earlier. Sorry, just took my oh, hand. Okay. And we just did intros. You want to you want to oh. take the last spot? Um, yeah, I'm Samir. I work in Catalyst and uh, work on computer vision for health tech. So, oh, if you know Python, a lot of people. And then no Python, and he knows Python. All right, great, terrific. Um, so good. So I know, Leah, you told me to, to take the lead on the news because you, you've been doing professional things um, <laughs> out, of, out in the world. So um, so I figured what I'd do, I, there's two things that I want to show that I think were um, decently mind-blowing in the past two weeks. And then there's there's two, two, two other things that I want to talk about that, to open up a conversation a bit, and then we'll move on to Jane. Hey, Jane. Hi. Are you excited? Hi. Um, okay, so let me let me share my screen. I want to share a couple of couple of things with you that that um, if you haven't heard about, um, you probably will be. Uh, the first one is um, a thing called Style Drop that Google announced. It's not live yet, but um, you can all see my screen. Yes. Yeah. So the like what you're seeing here, this this little image flitting back and forth. The little image in the corner is the training image, and then the prompt is a logo, um, a, a transparent water drop, flat cartoon style. So so they're basically just you know giving a prompt, including text, and it's picking up the style of that little image and and uh, doing things you know quite impressively. Um, these images, so again, the source image is the little kid drawing to the left, and then you know all of the prompts for these images are like a banana in the style of that image, a hat, a moose, things like that. So you know, notice it picked up the wrinkled paper, it picked up the style of like a kid, you know, drawing. And then I'm just going to go through a bunch of these because they're, they're just insane. Um, like for me, like pay attention to the moose or the cow, like or the hat, um, and just notice it's. You know, it's not just picking up colors and textures. It's it's actually changing the style of the illustration. So there's the the same image without um, without blue in it. Um, they got a they got a fair amount of Van Goghs in here. This one this one kind of blew me away. Like look at the moose there, right? So this is that '90s illustration style. Um, and uh, you know, you can all the clip art you could ever want. You can yeah. now just generate with a prompt, right? Um, this one also impressed me, right? So the, the only thing is the source image of the little tree sticker, and you know it's just figuring all this stuff out. So this is not available yet; it's not it's not live anywhere. So there's a chance this is vaporware, but th this is the first thing I've seen from Google that you know I think is fairly jaw dropping. Um, so so that's that piece, and then I figured I'd show um, if you haven't. Um, seen generative fill in Photoshop. So Adobe launched Adobe Firefly whenever it was a month ago um, with, with some of their generative stuff. And they've now rolled um, uh, generative AI into Photoshop. Um, so I figured I'd just do some live here um, and we can we can see how good or bad it does. Um, and that's always fun. So this is an image I did in Mid Journey. Um, I think I did this. I was doing a TikTok live and I think I, I just put in a uh, whatever stupid prompt and this was what it gave me but what i've done is i extended the canvas and then i have the bottom section highlighted here so um 
this little bar here is a contextual bar. So when you make a selection, it pops up that bar. And if, if it's empty, you can click on this generative fill button and you can type something in, but you don't have to. So if you don't type anything in, it'll just analyze what's there and fill in the rest. Feel free to sing the Jeopardy theme song. And then for, for each thing, it gives you three different options. Like that's really bad. That's mostly bad. And that's that's not too bad. And it looks like I um, I didn't quite select enough. So mm -hmm. let me get rid of that and change my selection here. I'll, I'll select a little bit more of this. So we'll do it again, see if it does it without that line. But can you change his pants? That's pretty good. Um, well, the, it gives you three options. So yeah, like there's a there's khakis, there's kind of leather or waxed cotton. No, but right? can you specify? Can you specify like shorts or or? Boxing? Oh yeah. So, so yeah. So so um, let me see. Add a prompt. Um, yellow rain shorts. <laughs> So this is free yeah this is free it's part of so if you're in adobe go to creative suite and then you go to the beta apps and it's in it's in the beta version of photoshop <laughs> there you go <laughs> hey he played for the lakers <laughs> you know, it's, that, it's probably worth mentioning that, a little monk, monked up there but that looks pretty good that's that's very new york and then we'll do the top up here and again do a b52 moment okay yeah that's good b52 I've had difficulty with it saying anything with war related. So, uh, so, oops, I didn't want to view the guidelines. I don't care about the guidelines. <laughs> this is that's why I keep getting kicked <laughs> off TikTok. The magic TSA words. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want you bomb. B52 plane. How about that? Uh, okay. No trigger words. Wow. We don't use violent imagery at the AI salon. That's right. It's been, it's been that's, really that's tricky. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can get the B-52s in there because I love Shaq. Oh, that's oh, great. Oh, that's oh, wow. Make sure to keep here sitting dancing in the background. <laughs> okay, that was a fail. So let's just, we'll just kill all the, the problems and generate. Let's see if, I assume it'll just fill it in with buildings, but let's see. Mm -hmm. Fill out the top of the sign. I love his yellow shorts. <laughs> Is that anyway? So that's that. So, I, I mean, for me, what's fascinating about this that it's got it's got some some ways to go. There, there's certain things it can't do very well at all. There's other things it does incredibly well. Um, but you know, this is this is very early tech. So as as the tech gets better, you know, like where's the boundary between? You know, was this a photograph I took and extended, or is this AI generated? Like, where's yeah. that boundary? I, 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 well, and, I, and does it matter? Like, where it does it, right, it right, matter. When does it matter and when does it, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's it's um, well, and that's that sort of tees up. So so let me flip over to to the two other things I want to I want to talk about. Um, this one, I don't know if you saw this, but the city of Boston released interim guidelines for using generative ai this is to my knowledge the first city that's done this um they basically say that you know generative AI, ai is a set of new technologies but basically it's here to stay um and it's it's a really well constructed like an eight page document with like sample use cases um so if you work for the the city of boston you know here's the kinds of things you can do they've got um principles you know like like our values empowerment inclusion and respect Transparency and accountability, innovation and risk management, right? Um, um, fact check your work. It talks about the fact that it hallucinates. Like it's just a very well thought out thing. So, so this what, what this document did for me. Like I think the 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 parallel to the Photoshop generative fill is like we're starting to see the dominoes fall of these generative tools are just going to be in 
you know, everything we do. They're just going to start showing up in different places. You know, you work for the city of Boston, all of a sudden you've got a, you know, you've got a guideline here um, to teach you how to use it, right? So, I, you know, someone on here was talking about the, the impact of AI on education. Well, you know, something like this is important. I also heard there's a related story to this. The city of New York um, had previously, the, the Department of Education had previously banned ChatGPT. They're reversing that decision, right? So, so there's another domino sort of starting to fall. And then, and then the last thing I'll show here, there's a, a Wharton professor um, named uh, Ethan Mullock, and he wrote this piece called Setting Time on Fire and the Temptation of the Button. And basically what he's talking about here, so the, the first little um, screenshot he includes here is he got access to um, Microsoft Word and Google Docs that have the help me write button, right? So, mm. so he's basically saying, the, the example that he uses is really interesting. He says, you know, if, if I'm writing a recommendation letter, you know, for a student to get a job, he goes, historically, the time that I took to write the letter, you know, sort of demonstrated the value. And then he said, you know, do you push the button? And, and if you push the button, does that change the value of work or the value of contribution? And is, is the goal to get the student a job or is the goal to demonstrate that you care about the student, right? And, and so, you know, the, the question he kind of poses is how often are you going to push the button? And, and this is what you're talking about tonight, Jane. So I'd love to just kind of open up the conversation to, to everyone to just, you know, I'm curious what your thoughts are as these tools shift from kind of the AI ghetto off to the side where it's like chat GBT is this thing off to the side and it's evil to, you know, starting to roll into our everyday life. You know, I'm just curious. Are you going to be a button pusher? Um, are you not? I think you know. I think this crowd sort of indexes heavily to button pushing, but uh, I'm just curious to open up the conversation. So yeah, if you're online, raise your hand, and if you're here in Denver, just let us know. And Ken, Ken will manage the the chaos of the conversation. Uh, we'll start with George Williams. One of the things I put in the comment, I think it, you know, I think we talked about it earlier, was that it's really good at being the ugly first draft generator. But beyond that, a lot of the writing that I've sort of used it as an ugly first draft, it's fluff. It's there are way too many adjectives. I mean, it's kind of like if when <laughs> George Orwell is like trying to find policies of the English language and beat everybody with it because it's just so <laughs> over the top. It's so it's it's really good at getting sort of that, like I said, that first draft. But then in the context of recommendations or other things. I think it requires you to take a, it's almost like the, the normal writing process of making that rough draft, then organizing and then doing the whole process. I think it can be a tool in that, but even as I read stuff, you get to sort of, you start to figure out when you see that word salad that someone's been <laughs> playing with Chad GPT. <laughs> That's great. All right, thanks for that, Leah. You know, Wait, to answer, there was one quick question with um, the immersion. The answer is yes, because I've done prompts where after I've done something, I'll say, you know, revise this as if you were in the style of this or putting in rules like limit. You can only use two adjectives per sentence or be more precise and concise. I think that there are ways to get it there. Um, but if you just go with that first, you know, that first stab and don't go back and make sure it doesn't make up facts or make sure it doesn't. Uh, really express what you want to express, it will just be fluff. Yeah, other than the fact checking part of it, what I've been particularly interested in is if I ask you to write in a certain style, it still sounds fluffy to me too. However, if I asked it to pretend to be somebody and I do this, what I can't remember, uh, Brian Rulinell or something was convincing me that if you can hypnotize it as it were and, and focus on convincing it that it is so-and-so, that it seems to have a pretty interesting effect on what the writing style comes out as. It doesn't necessarily fix the fact checking problem, but just curious about that from other people. Great. Shit, uh, uh, Leah, you're up next. Um, I wanted to talk about, and it's not just because I, I live in Massachusetts, but I think what I, I find the Boston guidelines incredibly helpful and um, hopeful because I, I do think that what we're missing in AI is regulation and framework to sort of give us um, guardrails and a, a, a plan for how to do this responsibly. 
And I feel like yeah, at least a starting it's, point, right? It's a starting point, and it's an opportunity to start copying it, start looking at it, start talking about it. Um, I, it feels very hopeful for me. Appreciate that. We have a what? Yeah, plus one to the comment on the Boston guidelines, thinking of them almost as an on ramp for people who are like, I don't know what to do and kind of how to do this. Yeah. But to the question of do you push the button? I think it was a couple months ago, Vanderbilt came under fire because there was a mass shooting and their letter was oh, like right. they used chat GPT for the letter and they had to apologize that they did that. It was kind of interesting of like, why is it bad that they did that? Or it's just bad that they didn't edit it, right? Because like, yeah. is it bad to actually use it to think about here's what I want to convey? Yeah, 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 and, uh, yeah. And where's the boundary of is it fully AI or is it fully human? You know, that's a spectrum. You prompted it, too. right? So, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It wouldn't have written it back. Is there somebody else over here that wanted to? Can you hear your hand, Um, I guess my my passing thought was. If I, I think it, what I see happening in gaming a little bit is that you can choose the character's mood and tone and temperature and things like that, and I imagine that would become more easily um, available with writing too. And I sort of wonder how, um, you know, let's say somebody's very well spoken when they use an LLM, but then you meet them in person, like, and they don't know how to talk. Like, I wonder how that that's going to contrast with face-to-face -face interactions, or if we're going to start using them like assistive technology. I mean, yeah. well, that's normal. Yeah. 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 That's true. I mean, that happens already. Yeah. That's great. All right, next to that, Laura Bingham, you're up. Yeah, hey there. Um, I hope I'm not rambling too much here. I'll try to keep it brief, but I have so many thoughts going through my head. Um, I, I guess I'll start with the fear side of this, where from what i gather just visually it looks like we're all pretty experienced in our field where um we're we we've been around the block we've done our jobs i do fear i, I see and i don't have children but i see our kids growing up um, post covid uh in a world where we aren't a lot of there's not a lot of face to face i see a lot of teens struggling to interact um socially um and probably not the best example of that but <laughs> but i wonder I, I guess i'm kind of comparing that with ai and how we interact on a human level with each other um how we speak how we see each other emotionally um how we connect so that's kind of the part that i am interested in and i love to hear if anyone that has any other kind of thoughts about that uh but that's this, and I also kind of feel like we're in the the wild west right now of AI. Um, you know, the the regulations, we're starting to see some of that. Um, it's still a bit of the wild west, and it's just that weird time of like, what's going to happen next? Like, we just we we, I don't know if we we know. So just wanted we to don't. throw that out there. <laughs> no, that's great. We we don't know. That's why we're here. We're we're all yeah. just trying to figure it out. Yeah, so you're in the perfect I place. Yeah. I love it. Okay, good. Because I'm over here yeah. like. <laughs> I, job, I also would love to do my job faster too. So, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we're a salon, sometimes we're a support group. You know, we're, whatever's <laughs> happening, go either way. All right. Thanks for that, Laura. Ted, do you have something you want to add? Um, yeah, I think it, it's it's interesting. We we talked a lot about it in, in the in the salon in the past about you know the, the, everyone's reaction to AI and and uh, it's either you know the killer robots they can get us or one of the big excuses is. Well, it's it's not that good, right? So you know, it, it, it writes robotically and it, it makes mistakes and hallucinates and does all those things, and they kind of dismiss it in that way. But I think we we touched on you know uh, uh, prompt engineering earlier. It you can you can train it locally to write in a certain style, um, and it, it it's remarkable if you play around with a little bit. It you know this what could be somewhat an over adjectival if that's a word. Um, you know, writing sample. All of a sudden, you can actually uh make it sound pretty pretty good it's you know so it's it's where it's it's a it's very interesting to play with thanks for that time. all right alan you have something you want to add alan microphone <laughs> i've used uh chat gpt to write a, a novella and that's exactly what i did i mostly i got it to sort of help fill in the blanks and then edit it to what i wanted and then had a grammar check and make sure i wasn't using any uh, inappropriate language inappropriate in this case means for the 1830s when the novel is set 
Uh, so I, I want to give one, one funny story is that I went to a wedding, uh, where the, you know, the custom now is for the, the bride and groom to sort of name their vows to each other, which fortunately I didn't have to do. So I spared the audience having to listen, but in this case, the groom, his thing was so long I, and had so many adjectives. I swear it was written by Chad GPT, <laughs> which is kind of funny. That he had Chat GPT write his wedding vows. So there you go. Awesome. I right, appreciate that. We have a hand raised up. Um, notes that we're speaking primarily about the tools as they exist today. And while that's important context for now, like we're about to move to a point where, where the automation, machine precision of human intuition is reaching automation. You see, you work with computer vision. A few years ago, that was fledgling. You know, we were we were identifying characters. We were, you know, we, we couldn't do the things. We were at the point we are now with the, the greater world with an LLM, which is just a, a linguistic version of understanding the world around us. So as far as like a writing style, we're experimenting with, say, one big hosted version of that. What's to say... You know, my personal device, you work with, with edge devices here. Um, you wanting to bring AI to those, let's say my personal AI that's trained on a way that I speak. Yep. I think very soon in the future, the face-to-face the -face of it all becomes our, our ultimate currency. Our time is our ultimate currency. You're here. Um, but a lot of the things that, that we're seeing come up with AI, um, in its current state, still allows us more extensibility and understanding and intuition via this very crude version than we had before. Uh, you mentioned uh, doing it with uh, children as they are coming up in a post-COVID world. To be able to speak to my three-year-old, you know, explain why listening is important from the standpoint of a three-year-old and use only words that a four-year-old would understand. Those are those are things that I couldn't have dreamed of. Yeah. No. And so these tools, where they're about to go, I feel is is almost where we focused. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate that. Oscar, you're up next. And I totally drew a blank. Um, <laughs> I, I I think that like too often we we romanticize you know effort. As like, you know, like, oh, well, I'm not begrudging, you know, the fucking wheelbarrow that I have in the backyard for, you know, helping me like move heavy things. And I don't want to like think about the days when I have to lift like 50 pound sacks of concrete as like, you know, being more authentic. The other thing is that um, one of the biggest issues that we've had as humanity was the inability to truly understand one another. You know, when we're communicating most of like bar fights I've been is because like I misheard what the hell you said or whatever the case may be. And if this tooling allows us to express ourselves with some greater degree of fidelity and allows that to be transmitted, if it's the babble fish, you know, if it's what allows us to truly express and truly be understood, that's not a terrible thing in the grand scheme of things. I, I, I don't see this as a net negative, at least not right now. And I hope that it's not the portent of dumbing us down. I just think that I don't want to have to worry about capitalization and, you know, where I put the apostrophe, if there's a technology for me, that's probably a benefit. All right, good points. Uh, we'll just take one or two more. Cindy Hugh, do you have something you want to add? Yeah, I just want to uh, tell the joke about ChatGPT. So some people might know that ChatGPT has been used in um, universities and 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 the schools for as students use them to write papers. And it's really difficult to, to detect them because um, its original material is not copied from any sources. So. Uh, and one professor, I forgot which university uh, she's from, but she suspects that majority of her students use ChatGPT to write their papers. So she turned into ChatGPT and basically copy and paste their paper into and and with a phrase. So did you write them? And ChatGPT say yes to every single paper in her class. 
That's yeah. why you got to run it through a chat GPT detector. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, basically, the so she um, put every grades of her students on hold because she suspects that none of her students actually wrote their own paper. But um, one student claimed that um, she actually doesn't know chat GPT at all. And she, she felt very... Uh, uh, confused why she got why she got um, uh, why why she got accused for using uh, chat GPT and uh, some and and some people actually put the paper of that professor into the chat GPT prompt and ask chat GPT GPT so did you write that paper as well and chat chat GPT also say yes Oh yeah, yeah. comment uh, to the um, in the chat. It, that is from Texas A and M University. Uh, um, thank you for touching on that. Great. Yeah, we'll do one more. All right, we'll do one more. George Williams. Yeah, I think uh, th as we think about even where the technology is going, there's this broader thing I've been thinking about, which is sort of back in the day was it uh, Theodore Adorno was always talking about how are things really new or has particularly entertainment and sort of goods, they're just sort of, you know, standardized and, and repetitive. So even though the technology is great, it's really just repackaging things which kind of already exist. And we have to be aware of even as we move into some of the autonomous things that it's, it's, it's autonomous, but it's also not necessarily creating new content. It's simply remixing content which already exists. Yep. Okay, great. Um, good talk, good good talk. I feel like it, it's actually a really good setup for what Jane's gonna talk about. Um, I met Jane at a creative morning, probably December, January. January. Yeah. yeah, so I think we had had one salon. I think you maybe came to the second salon or something like that, but um, I met Jane, we're, we're at the, you know, the networking part of Creative Mornings, and, and I said, what do you do? And she goes, oh, I'm a copywriter. And I was like, oh, no, because <laughs> I just sort of had this epiphany about ChatGPT. I'm like, I think you need to start learning this stuff. I was a little sheepish, and, and you came to the salon, and you, you, know, you become an organizer, and you're just amazing. So really excited to have you. So, um, so we're going to do a little swippy swatch swap here. She's going to sit here. So let me get her presentation up and running. But Jane Endicott, here we go. All right. I suppose you can just play it, you know. Yeah, I can play the button. Hello. Um, so yeah, like Kyle said, I am my name is Jane Endicott and Pushing buttons. Is it not happening? Things aren't happening. Let's yeah, try reloading it. We might have okay. a Microsoft Edge. Welcome to the future. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're just thinking of like a second screen that it's sometimes it like puts the presentation on the other. AI is easy, yeah. SV is hard. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll ask you. Oh, do you have to build today? Uh, what is that? No. Builds on the slides. Well, yeah, I have this presenter. Oh, yeah, I think I saw that. That's. There you go. Oh, wait. No, now, no, now it's. Wait, yeah, no. No, there you go. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. That's right. That's, I, I used a chat GPT yeah, to help me solve right. that problem. Kyle. Okay. So, like Kyle said, uh, my name is Jane Endicott. I am a content writer. I also write fiction. Uh, been, I've been doing this my whole life, dedicated my my entire life to it. I was an English major in college. Um, and so I've been using ChatGPT for a few months, um, and it, it, it basically does my job now. Um, I, I don't write things. I write things into ChatGPT, and it makes things for me. Um, what I, you know, what took me three months ago, what would take me 20 minutes to write, now it takes me three seconds, and then I edit it, and a few minutes later, I have a piece of content. So um, all of this has, you know, and obviously I've been kind of just following uh, the news and the updates, and every week I'm pushing the boundaries of what I can do with it and learning more and more. Um, and so all of this has, has kind of um, made me think about something, a book I read 
years ago, and it's, I started asking these questions. So there's a story um, about an epic story about a hero he gets this call to adventure. Um, he, you know, there's this goal that he has to achieve. Um, he meets a mentor who kind of like guides him on this path, gives him like wisdom and courage to uh, achieve his goal. He bar embarks on this quest. And over, you know, the course of this journey, he meets allies. Uh, he meets people who kind of join his team and fight his battles with him. Um, he confronts his adversaries. He comes up against many enemies, um, experiences trials and setbacks. And he also comes up against himself. He's also facing his own, like, strengths and weaknesses and, and limitations. Um, and, and ultimately, he's, he's fighting for a cause that's, that's bigger than himself and than any one person. Finally, he returns home. Um, he, he meets this goal. Uh, he, he fulfills his destiny. He experiences a kind of death and rebirth. Um, and through this experience, he attains newfound wisdom and knowledge. He completely transforms as a person. And he's, he's just, uh, you know, this whole experience has made him different than he was at the very beginning. So you might be listening to this, you might be thinking of something that's familiar to you. Um, you know, this sounds a lot like Frodo Baggins, the Lord of the Rings. He went on a quest to destroy the Ring of Power. He had the guidance of Gandalf, who, who instilled wisdom and courage into him and, and, and kind of led him on this path. He had, uh, you know, a band of comrades uh, who fought on his side, who fought those battles with him. And he also had his best friend who was loyal to him to the, to the bitter end, all the, all the way to the very end. It also describes Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, episodes four through six. Um, the real <laughs> The only ones that matter. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, at the beginning of Luke's journey, he's a young man living on Tatooine, this, just this farm boy, and he leaves home to become, uh, you know, a pilot for the Rebel Alliance. Uh, his mentors, Yoda and Obi-Wan, train him as a Jedi, they teach him to master his mind, and they give him the skills to um, go on this journey and, and fight this battle, and um, it, it, ultimately he confronts his past in, in the supreme ordeal, this, this supreme battle, and he defeats the emperor. And then there's also Harry Potter. <laughs> this story describes Harry Potter from the Harry Potter series. He also had a call to adventure to defeat Mordor, or excuse me, Voldemort, and, um, and the Death Eaters. He, in doing so, he had to like confront his tragic past and, and meet his destiny. Um, you know, he had his friends, obviously Ron and Hermione, but also, you know, many students from um, students and teachers from Hogwarts fought those battles and and guided him through those challenges, helped him along the way. You know, and he had his mentor, Albus Dumbledore. Um, there's many others. This story describes oh, I saw one. Uh, this story describes many stories. Um, you know, that we can think of about a hero that goes on this journey. And they have all these, you know, trials and tribulations, and ultimately they meet this greater destiny. The one that I'm thinking of that really has been struck has struck me uh, is an epic poem that's three thousand years old. Uh, the Odyssey, um, Odysseus from the Odyssey. Uh, it dates back to ancient Greece. Um, it started, you know, it was a story that was composed orally and passed down through the generations. Homer didn't write it. He's just attributed with writing it down and, and it endures. And um, it's not, you know, it's not the oldest example of the hero's journey, but it's definitely, you know, there's stories that exhibit the hero's journey before that, but this is one of the most prominent ones. Um, and um you know it's 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 the story that many many of these other stories are modeled from so in odysseus's case he um his story starts when he leaves his home of ithaca to go to war on the day that his son is born he goes with, he fights with the greeks in the trojan war 
The war drags on for 10 years, heavy losses on both sides, really gruesome. Um, neither one is really winning it. They're just kind of butting heads. Uh, and then finally, in the 10th year, Odysseus comes up with the winning strategy that helps them win the war. And the Greeks all celebrate and they can sail home except for Odysseus. Uh, he gets lost on his way. He gets, he experiences a lot of setbacks. Uh, his ship is thrown off course. Um, he fights monsters. He travels to the land of the dead. He overcomes temptations by sirens and sirens and uh, a scenic, a witch. Uh, he goes through all of these trials and Ultimately, he, he loses his ship, he loses his men, and he's, he's reduced to nothing. He's just a, a man on a piece of driftwood floating in the sea, but he stays focused on his goal to, to get home. Uh, and once he does get home, <laughs> there's a bunch of dudes who want to who wanna get with his wife and like, <laughs> kill his kid. So, his, so he finally did, so 20 years after he's left home, he gets home and he uh, he's, he's he's met up with like the ultimate this is, his ultimate ordeal is getting these suitors out of the way and reuniting with his family. You know he gets help from the gods and and finally he reaches his goal. So all I, what what how the reason these stories. This framework has endured for so long, again, it's, it's thousands of years, is because it, it teaches us how to be human. And, and these are the questions that, that have come up for me as I've been using ChatGPT to do my job. Um, it, you know, and that many people in my field are asking, in the creative field especially, like if a machine can do this thing, then what's my, what's my role? Um, you know, we're, and we're thinking about where's the, where's the, the boundary between human and machine? Well, what does it mean to be human? What, what are we losing? What are we gaining? What do we hold on to? And what do we let go? Like we, we haven't even begun to answer those questions before we even figure out like what the role is with these machines. Um, and it, it uh, calls to mind this, this common refrain that I hear with writing, um, just anecdotally kind of here and there throughout the years, and that is, I am bad at writing because I am bad at grammar. People think that there's this idea that writing is nothing more than stringing words together into a grammatically correct sentence, and they feel like if they don't know the difference between there, there, and there, then they must be terrible at writing or if they, they get a typo or whatever. Without a doubt, the mechanics of language are important. Structure is important. Consistency and rules are important. And if you've ever read an 18th century novel, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but it's it's just mistaking this idea that, that all it takes is just to put words together. That's all we have to do. And if AI can put those words together, then, then where, what's the role in, in humanity? But it's not the stringing together of words that's, that makes us human, it's the act of storytelling. It's all those, you know, it's all those experiences that Frodo went through and that Luke went through and, um, and, and Neo from the Matrix and just like any human you can think of, I mean, the, the, the techniques were important, but the story was, was as compelling as anything else. And so I want you to think about, um, there's that book that you read that you really loved or really hated. <laughs> and we all have one, um, you know, the book that you read in high school, or the book that you read for a book club, and maybe it really imprinted on you and it shaped you as a person and maybe you wanted to throw it across the room uh, and, and, and just dump it in the garbage. But there's a reason that, that it, it ignited that reaction in you. Like, why did you love it or why did you hate it? And how did that make you feel? 
And the reason, I mean, the reason for that is it's the hero's journey. It's we, we all have watched the hero's journey. The, the experiences in them are, are deeply human. It's, you don't have to like fight orcs or be a Jedi or um, know, whatever Harry did, he did the magic thing. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to do those things to, to be the hero, but really what the hero is, is we understand those experiences of like love, grief, loss, loneliness, and fear. We've all been on our own paths and lost our way and experienced self-doubt and tried to find our way back. We've had people who picked us up and kind of held our hand and guided us when we needed them. And that that is that is the connection that the hero's journey is making with, with us. And that is why it is endured for 3,000 years, because it's it's a genuine human connection. Um and these these stories teach us about our humanity. The, I think what's so impactful about them, you know, some of them just being in like these fantastical realms and these fantastical settings is that it helps us step outside of our familiar, um, you know, living our, our own lives. Like we're just so myopically just engaged with our own problems, you know, that it's maybe hard to get some perspectives. And so, you know, if you can go to Hogwarts or go to Mordor or like sail on a ship in ancient Greece and like see the same experience, but in a different context, it gives you a little bit of perspective. And again, deeply human experiences and it, it creates a genuine human connection. If you can see that, you know, that, if, that like, the writer on one end has these ideas and these experiences and they're shaping into them to the words and, and the, the story creates this conduit. On the other side, there's someone reading it. And that, that story is a connection between the writer and the reader. Um, it's, it's a genuine human connection. You feel seen, you feel heard, you feel valued. Um, you know, you feel like you are part of something bigger than yourself. You feel like you're part of humanity. At, um, in my short involvement with a, with the salon, one of the things that comes up a lot is uh, you know this question about like what is art? You know, we because we're talking about AI generated content, you know, images, words, photographs, and um, you know the question comes up of like what what is art? What makes it art? And if the machine can do this, then is it art? Um, and one thought that has come up. It, you know, is this idea of intention. If you're making something with intention, then that makes it art somehow. Um, I was an English major in college and I read a lot of books that had the intention of being art and they were the kind of books that I wanted to throw across the room. <laughs> like they, they had the technique down, they, they had the words, they put the words together nicely, but it, you know, there was just something about them that, that didn't, with me. And so it, it you know, after, and after writing my own fiction for years and being a, a reader for years, what, you know, what I've come to believe is that the, the technical and the creative, that connection is, is symbiotic. You can't have one without the other. Um, you know, you need the story and you need the, the technique and the, the stringing the words together. But with, with, you know, you need the two to create that art. And again, it's it's the writer taking taking those ideas, those experiences in their head, and like grinding them into words, like like a sausage, and and you know, like give, like giving it to the reader. It's just that act of of taking those ideas and images in your head and manifesting them into you know some kind of language or visual element. And in my experience with ChatGPT, again, it's, I've been using it for a few months with content writing. I haven't tried it with uh, fiction writing yet. I'm kind of not ready to go there. <laughs> but, <laughs> still, like trying to wrap my head around like what, what that is doing my job. Um, but I've noticed it frees up the brain power for more creative work. 
you know, it's, you know, someone talked about the shitty first draft. It does the shitty first draft for you. It, it barks out the words and it does the string, stringing together of the words, the more technical things. And it frees up brain power for me to be more creative. It frees up brain power for me to, um, you know, make that human connection with the person on the other side. And honestly, like, that's why I do the job. I mean, I, I, that's the thing that interests me. That's the thing that, um, you know, made me passionate about reading and then made me passionate about writing. It's that human connection. It's not, you know, I don't read a book and think like, oh my God, I loved how they used hyphens or I hated that they had dangling prepositions. Like none of that comes to me. It's, it's all about that human connection. Um, that's why we do this job. And of course, um, you know, there's there's obviously some some things we have to think about, <laughs> some uh, some risks, some dangers that we have to think about. And and here is where the hero's journey uh, can also be instructive because in in every story, um, the hero has some kind of weakness or limitation that he bumps up against. Um, that, that this becomes an obstacle for him. And one of the most common ones is pride. Um, mm. Harry Potter had pride. I thought he was kind of a brat sometimes. Luke Skywalker was could be like a little bit full of himself. I don't know about, you know, the Lord of the Rings, but I'm sure it's in there. Um, and with the case of Odysseus, um, you know, that story comes up for him uh, when he fights the, uh, this giant cyclops. Men get trapped in the cyclops cave. They escape, and they're they're sailing away on the ship. They're making their their getaway, and and they're like they're in the clear. And oh, like Odysseus is like, man, I want this guy to know who did this to him. You know, he's he, his his heart swells with pride, and he declares himself to to the giant cyclops. I am Odysseus, uh, the, you know, from Ithaca, and I am the one who blinded you. Well, little did he know that the Cyclops was the son of the sea god Poseidon. And when you're sailing away, uh, when you're sailing home on your ship, you do not want to piss off the god of the sea. <laughs> and Poseidon knocks, knocks him off course, and, and it's the beginning, that moment of pride when he declared himself, when he thought himself bigger than he really was, that is when his troubles really started. Um, that was the beginning of, of that whole journey for him. And, um, you know, Poseidon did not let him forget that. And this, again, this is this, this 3,000 year old structure, thousands of years old, the hero's journey shows us, you know, Humans have these godlike powers. We possess the curiosity and ingenuity to invent this, invent this incredible technology. But we have these human limitations. We lack the wisdom to, to see the implications and the consequences. And, um, you know, we think just like Odysseus, we think we're bigger than we really are. And just like, you know, Harry Potter and Luke Skywalker. Um, yeah, so it, 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 we bump up against this force that is greater than us. Um, and so as we, as we move forward, you know, going back to that question, um, of, of what makes us human, what do we stand to gain? What do we stand to lose? Where is that? Where is that line between humanity and, and machine? And how do we how do we move forward? Those solutions are in these stories. The solutions are in the hero's journey. Um, you know, like I said, it's we're all we are all on this path in some in some way, and um, you know we're part of something bigger. Um, and you know, if, if we if we take those lessons. You know, the hero's journey is part of our, our heritage as humanity. Um, the story of the Odyssey, so, so much of it is just is just passing down 
um, culture and history and and uh, religion. Um, it's it's our heritage is in these stories, and if we go back and learn from them, we'll be able to. It'll give us. It'll show us the path that we need to take, and it will give us the agency to um, you know take that control um, and to decide what what how artificial intelligence is going to like what the role it's going to play you know in in our future. Um, and if we don't do that, it's it's going to decide it for us. And I don't mean it in like a Skynet way or like a Matrix way. I just mean that like we're not, it's going to get out of our control. And uh, we have a very small window to do that. <laughs> a very, very small window to do that. Um, so before we go to questions, uh, I think there was kind of, uh, I want to acknowledge that there was maybe some a different idea about what I would talk about tonight. And I kind of took it in a weird direction. Um, so if I, I didn't really get into the nitty gritty of, of writing itself. Um, but I just feel like these questions are really important. I feel like even as a writer, I can't, I don't know how to move forward without like asking these questions. So, um, if you want to get in touch with me, please email me and then in the subject line, write human generated mail. And then that way I'll know you'll from the salon and I'll make sure to connect with you, do a chat or anything just, um, or, uh, have an existential crisis, whatever you want. I'm, I'm here. So. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. So if you if you've got questions for Jane, uh, put your hand up online. Obviously, here here in Denver, uh, just let Ken know that, that you want to say something. How do I how do I get on the camera? Oh, uh, just hit this. Key, uh, click on the little uh, down down. No, not that one. Uh, Over here. Uh, yeah. Over here. Oh, okay. What is this device? <laughs> what is this? Yeah, there you what go. What is this? What are we doing? Um, so, so if you've got questions, I first of all, I thought that was great, and and yeah, you know, I think I think where we've kind of historically gone with some of these talks is tell us about the tool, and you know, yeah. and and the mechanics, and and so my question for you is is and, and you kind of hinted at it, but. Yeah. You know, where are you right now? Are you feeling huh. less human or more human? Like, um, like it feels, yeah. it feels like this has clearly raised the issue for yeah. you. So I'm just curious where where you are. I definitely feel more human. Um, you know, like I said, it it the that shitty first draft. It's just like you're just barfing words onto the page. Yeah. You're just grinding through it, and um, this, like I said, I, like I don't. I don't, I don't know how to quantify brain power. Like, I don't know how to quantify, like to me, it's a resource. You know, I only have so much of yep. it. I, I, I can't like just endlessly write things, you know, like I have a threshold, yep. right? I hit a wall and, and chat GPT is giving me more. Like, if you just think about it as gasoline in the tank of your car, like, this this is the the electric vehicle. <laughs> this is like the lithium battery that is that is helping me get more mileage out of my yeah. you know out of my talent you know out of my skill. And I'm still kind of figuring out what that means for my career and my future. Um, I don't know that I, I don't want to just be like churning out content, you know. But I, I hope it'll help me do more meaningful work. It just hit me when you said that. What, yeah. what just hit me is that because one of the things I've been joking about is we're entering a post sci-fi world where you can sort of check off the movies where, where we see it. Yeah. And, and I've been joking that except for time travel, we don't have that. But what you're talking about is essentially time travel where chat GPT is, is jumping you yeah. across the hour that yeah. it would have taken you to barf out the yeah. words Yeah. And, and giving you that hour back to be at a higher level of yeah. humanity. Right. And I think it was someone in here was talking about time as a resource. Like I'm a freelancer. Time is money. Yeah. You know, that two hours that I spend, you know, that I save using this tool, that's time that my client is paying for. And that's time that I can be more, um, give them more quality work. Like that is a resource, you know, I like just kind of, I'm kind of getting off topic a little bit, but one of the arguments in, favor of like self-driving cars is like if you're not sitting at the driver's wheel for that 30 minutes that you're driving to work that's 30 minutes you get to do something else right, and, right. and be a human being <laughs> like take a nap read a book listen to a podcast like 
like imagine like just imagine if you just had an extra half an hour in your day like what you do with that like that's potential so that's awesome. i'm excited about it awesome. yeah right. Jane, you have a, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have a Hi. so one of my worries has been that um uh, clients would expect more out of you for the yeah. same amount of time. So yeah. it, would, it would create a pricing pressure. Have you noticed anything like that? Um, I, again, limited experience. <laughs> um, I have upscaled myself. Um, I So I've been doing, I, my only experience right now is from the other direction. And I, with my, my one main client right now that I, I do, scripts every day and i was transparent i was up front i was like hey i'm using this tool what do you think and they're like great so we want to make money and <laughs> and they wanted to upscale at the same time and so i like i was able to upscale with them so i don't uh, i don't have any experience with that um i mean it might just be up to the freelancer like for me like i love being creative so like it's i would like if it comes up, my plan is to like build them for the same amount of time and then just use that time differently mm -hmm. because um, I had one client a couple months ago, like when I really first started using this, it was like a tech heavy um, job and I had to explain like really technical concepts in language that anyone could understand and chat GPT explained things to me much faster than Google search did and that's when I like that's when I was oh, like, wow. screw Google search. <laughs> like, I know this thing he hallucinates. I know I have to like back it up, but it, um, I, I probably saved two hours and then I just use that two hours just to be more creative, which is like I said, like, it's what I wanted to do. It's like, I really ground down. I was like, all right, um, how can I give this person more quality? So I think it's up to you. You can even, you know, it's, yeah, there's some different ways to go about it, but that's a good question. Yeah. And then I have a question for you. I, I've used a lot of uh, AI tools for writing as well, but I don't really consider myself to be a professional writer. Uh, and one of the things I've noticed in, uh, with AI writing is that the AI tool tends to get worse the longer it goes. Yeah. And so I'm just wondering what your experience has been with that. Yeah. Maybe you could give us, you know, where where do you see it kind of starting to get repetitive, starting yeah. to pick things up, et cetera? I, the, uh, I asked ChatGPT once if it needed a nap because it was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> doing that. And it was like, I'm an AI language model. I don't need naps. So, like, um, so I, I mean, the good old IT, like turn it off and turn it back on again. I just, I usually just, when it does that, it just starts a new chat. Um, I use the like regenerate response a lot with ChatGPT. And I noticed that like, it'll just keep suggesting the same thing over and over again. Um, and so a lot of times I'll just like try a new prompt or refresh it or start a new chat over and it kind of like resets it. Um, thanks. Um, and, you know, I also think this is, this kind of ties into an interesting question of like, you know, I know what I'm doing because I've been doing this my whole life. Like I like, sometimes I'll just like copy and paste things. I can like edit down what ChatGPT is writing. And I can do that because I have the skill to do it. But if you're someone who doesn't, like, how do you learn to do that? How do you, how do you develop that skill? I think it's going to be really interesting to see how um, students, young kids coming up, like, how do they learn to write? Like, if this thing is doing it for them. And I, that's a question we don't have answered yet. But, like, like you, you know, simplest answer, turn it off and turn it back on again. <laughs> yeah. And let me, I'll, I'll just pop a potential technical solve in there because yeah. I haven't tried it, but if you pay for po.com, po you have access to the Claude 100,000 token model. I, I assume why it gets bad is that the early part of the conversation goes out of the context window. Okay. So it might be worth trying the Claude 100,000 token. That's 75,000 words. Um, it might be available somewhere else. I know it's on Po. If you pay for the free, it's like 20 bucks a month. Um, that that might be worth trying. Okay. Uh, Daniel Ritchie, you want to you want to you have a question or ask? You want to add? Yeah, just uh, something something kind of quick to add to that. Um, we did a little experimentation to understand context windows and ChatGPT, and uh, this is the result of you know some tech guys staying up until like two a.m. just hacking on this and understanding what made sense and. 
the the short version is when you're using chat gpt's web interface that context window includes both your questions and chat gpt's responses and clarifications that have to happen and the list goes on and all of that adds up to whatever it is that you're trying to say so if you're really wanting to kind of hack on that context window the best way to do it is to realize that your initial query can be the entirety of that 8,000 token oh, context. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So you can, yeah. you can literally, like, if you know that you have this big thing that you want to do. <laughs> That's why we're here. You, okay. <laughs> right. Well, and, and this is why, this is why ChatGPT yeah. is so empowering is they've figured out a way to kind of stage that context and give you that conversational, you know, back and forth. But, what one thing that we found that was just really cool is well wait a second you can skip all of that back and forth and you can say hey chat gpt i want you to do this one thing and if you get it wrong then go back to your 8000 context and just start over okay. with that completely yeah. fresh beginning cuz what it doesn't tell you through the ui is that if you go beyond that 8000 context window it just starts ignoring the the yeah. earlier part of that conversation okay. so so okay. if you control it yourself wow. you can you can be a lot more explicit yeah. And that's why that 100,000 thing might, it gives you more memory, basically. Okay, cool. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> Any other questions for Jane? Any other thoughts? I, I actually, I actually kind of want to follow up also about the, the presentation. Um, you know, so bringing things back to this idea of the hero's journey, uh, you know, I, th I think this, this concept of these stories that we've seen play out over and over again, um, I, I wonder, and, and this is maybe being, um, you know, I, I don't want to go too far off the rails on this, but I, I just want to make sure when you Please talk do about, it. I, like, yeah. I feel like I will. <laughs> <laughs> like, my presentation is like in the weeds. Go ahead, Daniel. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Well, when so when you talk about the hero's journey, I, I was kind of thinking like I could think of the hero's journey in the context of you know the individual going down this road of learning AI and the limitations, yeah. but. I also thought of like the hero's journey in the context of like the AI itself. Like you could you could almost like write the story from you know a large large language models perspective. I was just wondering, yeah. you know, for you know, wh which hero are we talking about, or which ones which ones have you thought uh, about related to this? <laughs> um, you know, I was talking about the human, uh, but the AI one kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, yeah, I was I was thinking about the human, you know, um, like I, I I can't I can't really trying to remember like my thought process but when I was working on this presentation I, I thought of myself like with my experience with AI as like the hero's journey like on this quest found a mentor in Kyle like found my my keeps like found my crew in the salon and like now I'm I don't even know what I am anymore um, <laughs> so um and I like I I mean I definitely I was think when I was working on this I was thinking of it as us because I just I you know we're we're so focused on the micro and and all of the conversations I hear about AI are the tools which are great like we need to learn the tools like we need to share what we know um you know but uh, we're also like we're so small like like we're we're sacks of meat on a floating rock <laughs> and this 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 globe has been like around for billions of years and we're just like we're just a, we're a flash in the pan and and we forget that and like um i don't know i just it, it, it humbles me you know and and that's what i've learned from these stories and that's just what i wanted to share with everybody uh, CJ awesome. Fletcher, you have something you want to add? Yeah, I do. The stack of me on a floating rock would love to. <laughs> well, it's it's, it, 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 is a, it is a it is a phrase like that, um, and through your presentation, which obviously you have passion behind it and intent behind it, yeah. that gives me um, gives me that hope that. AI is not the end all be all take over thing because yeah. there has to be that passion and that intent of passion behind the work. And even if you think that your presentation was off the rails, it still showed that what you had, the emotional context, which you had in your past, bringing into it, um, 
it to me it keeps reminding me that this isn't the takeover this isn't the the end all be all yeah. things our brains are still the the best tool that we have when it comes yeah. to the art forms no matter what they are so i'm going to just i want to say kudos bravo and huzzah to you on your thank presentation you. and thank you for that reminder of uh, of, what, <laughs> thank you. Of, yeah. of where i am in my universe <laughs> thank you yeah one of the things i mean i obviously had to condense this talk but what 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 comes up in the hero's journey too is is they start out as this like this individual on this individual journey and and at the end they're they're part of like they're connected they're part of humanity and just because we have this tool doesn't mean we can't lose that you know um apple just came out with these goggles and <laughs> you know my mom I, I was texting my mom and she was just kind of like you know now people are going to run into each other in their own <laughs> like in their own reality <laughs> you know like it doesn't have to be that way we just have to remember who we are you know uh we can't let these things control us they don't have to control us like you have control over how you use your phone you have control over how you use social media like and notifications like i don't have notifications on my phone but i don't want to be on it all the time you know i want to like the, the real life is is worth it to me but it's still valuable like they use it for my job all the time um we don't have to let these things control us we can decide how we want to use those tools so thank you cj i appreciate it then I, I have a, another, I, maybe not really a question, more of a comment. It's not really even full of right? You know, you spoke about the hero's journey, the initiation, the journey, and then the return home. And part of the takeaways was that, you know, reading the stories with new eyes. And I think one of the things that excites me about AI is that it'll be the AI that kind of reads our stories with new eyes. Yeah. And maybe reinvents the formula mm -hmm. because if we're coming up with the same stories and the same formulas over and over and over again. Yeah, totally. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see what new kind of formulas AI can come up with. And then you say the solution to AI is that we, you know, the solution to AI that we seek is in these stories. Well, I think, you know, we, the solution to humanity may, may be in AI, you know, we can see in AI the humanity that it's, it's yeah. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Maybe it's more like uh, we can, you know, put a mirror up through AI and it kind of shows our own humanity to us, like which that. is why we have to put up so many guardrails here and there because, yeah. you know, like uh, an untrained AI uh, may show us some, you know, racial tensions or whatever. But um, I just feel like, it's going to be an exciting time to see what AI can show humanity about yeah, itself. That's really cool. I like that a lot. Yep. Can I ask you the the um, to sort of to carry the metaphor forward? Yeah. The your avoidance of creative writing with AI yeah, is, is, yeah. is that your cyclops? Like uh, it might like, be. Like, <laughs> like, 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 I mean, if, you're, if you're willing, you don't have to talk about no. it. But I'm just curious, yeah. like, why are you not going there? Um, and what does it like? What does it represent? Or why yeah, are you not going so there? to kind of talk about that a little bit, and, and this is where I came up with the idea with the human connection. Like, I, th I think when I fell in love with writing was like, you know, the like that book that I found, I was eight years old. My my parents had just divorced. We had just had a big move. Like my family was just like wrecked. And um, I was just this like confused kid. Like I just trying to like survive, you know, and I, I read Matilda by Roald Dahl and there was just something about it, you know, maybe because her family is the way they are like that. I, I connected, like I felt, you know, I've been a reader, even reading books, but that was the first time that I read a book where someone was like, I see you, I hear you yeah. and you're not alone. Right. And then maybe like 15 years later after college, I was in this writing group and I'd written something. We were workshopping and a couple of people came up to me and they said, Hey, I know somebody who would really like your story. Uh, can I show it to them? And it like something clicked in me and I was like, Oh, I am that for somebody else. Like wow. somebody was that for me. And now I am that for somebody else. And it's just like the, that process of writing and, and all of my experiences, like it comes out. <laughs> like if, if you knew my personal history, like you would, you would see, you would see it in my stories and I'm just not ready 
to give that over to a machine yet because, um, you know, it's, it, it makes me who I am, but I'm sure it's there. So it's, it's like a deeply personal experience. Like when I write content, it's cerebral. Like I'm kind of like, oh, I see. like feeding on the brand and like munching on things. But like, you know, when I'm writing, when I'm writing fiction, I'm trying to create that human connection. I'm trying to, sh- I'm trying to say to somebody else, like, I see you, I hear you and you're not alone. And I, I know your experience. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I just don't know how to bring AI yeah, it into just, that it just yet. feels like a, a sacred space. Right? Yeah, it does. It yeah. does. Not that it can't, you know, someone mentioned they wrote a novella. Great. Awesome. Do your yes. thing. Um, but I'm old school. I still, I still write like pen on paper because that's how I learned. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a Luddite. I'm not against it. I'm just, this is like a, like you said, it's a sacred, yeah. a sacred space. Yeah, that makes, right now. That makes perfect yeah, sense. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna, I mean, that's going to be interesting because like going back to that thing about, you know, as these tools get integrated in all the other tools we use, you know, where do those boundaries get blurred? Yeah. It's going to yeah. be interesting to see, yeah. especially if you can train it on your own past writing. Yeah, I know. You know? know. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more somebody else have a question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wanna, yeah. come in. I don't know if we're raising hands or not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We we should, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, let's make sure we do the um, hands. I do uh, want to, I, I wanted to jump in and make a point that I think that yeah. um, as a creative person writing photography, yeah. There is something really important in the process of the creation itself. It isn't actually about the output of the writing or the output of the, the photograph. Yeah. And I think there's something about the hero's journey as the journey that I think sometimes the creative process in itself is also a hero's yeah, journey. Totally, totally. And I think that there is no way to recreate that with AI for me. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I feel like I've heard it come up a couple of times where it's like, well, if anyone can just go on a chat GPT and write a book, then what it like, what's the point? I'm like, well, yeah, they can, but like, do you know how hard it is to be creative? Like you have to like sit in a chair and show up every day and like, <laughs> like bang your head against this wall and do this thing. And I don't care if you're doing it with chat GPT or something else, like it's hard, you know, and you are going up against yourself because you're just like sitting in a chair and you're looking at this page or you're looking at your photograph or Photoshop and you're like, Oh my God, you know, and it's, it's like, it's a roller coaster ride. Um, it, it is, it's, you're totally right, Lee. It's the hero's journey. And, and I feel like the creative process, I think I kind of mentioned it in my, um, in my presentation where it's like, you have this idea in your head, like you can see it and it's like it's it's almost perfect and then you you like put it on the page and it's it's like a child a five-year-old drawing you know of, of something weird and it just doesn't you know and you're going through this process um so it totally is yeah well i think for me the art the process of creating is often discovery so i don't uh-huh. necessarily have an idea like oh i'm going to make a photograph that looks like this or oh i'm going to write a piece that looks like this in the same way yeah. that the hero's journey is it's a calling, right? So oh. you're called to create, but you don't necessarily yeah. know what that process and that journey is going to be until you come home. That's a really good point. I like so, and I think that, that that gets very lost, even in the yeah. even in the most um, authorship of authorship generative art, even in the you know going deep into the stable diffusion with the yeah. training models, yeah. that to me, that experience of that hero's journey when we are creating gets lost with yeah. AI. I think for me, that's totally. as human. Yeah, totally. Thank you, Leah. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I think you have well earned your <laughs> My golf clap. Your golf clap. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Please hit me up. I really appreciate all your time. Thank you. Yeah, Great. James, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Um, that was awesome. So, so what I'd like to do, Leah, is um, I think we have time for one AI confessional. Ooh, what so, AI so confessional we, tonight? We we did we did this once before, and anyone is fair game for this. But the basic idea with an AI confessional is, um, you know, what's something that you've done in the last two weeks or month or you know where you have um, gone through the uncomfortable place. Uh, <laughs> And done something with AI um, where um, something interesting happened. You learned something. You created something amazing. You created something awful. So it looks like maybe Sky. Are you willing to? Uh, so we'll put a Ken. Will you do it? You'll do a five-minute AI confessional. 
So you have five minutes, Guy. And uh, if, if indeed that's why you're raising your hand. It is. Awesome. All right. The, uh, the, the confessional booth is yours. Thank you. Forgive me for I have sinned. Yeah, um, good, perfect. <laughs> I, I have, uh, yeah. Um, I've been a songwriter for, good Lord, 51, 52 years. And uh, so as an experiment, I described a song for ChatGPT to write. And it came up with it. And I, of course, continued to wash and rinse. No, make it more like this. No, do it in the style of Leonard Cohen. No, <laughs> stop rhyming words so much. No, iambic pentameter. No, <laughs> it was the worst piece of crap I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, I found it deeply reassuring to my soul and a little disappointing to my sense of adventure. Um, and, you know, all's well that ends well. So I don't know if that's a, a jazzy, a confessional as you wanted, but that's what I have for you today, Father. Thank you. No, I, I think it's a really good. I'm just curious, were you using GPT-4 or 3.5? A 3.5, and that may explain a lot. <laughs> I, I would say I would say try four. four. Four from a language standpoint is way more nuanced, and it, it seems to be better. But but yeah, I, I it, it really is fun when you find those pockets of its incompetence, and you're like, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> it, it is a little bit. <laughs> and frankly, the lack of the moral conundrum yeah, of well-produced work in front of me was really good. It, it really saved me from you know a, a dark night of the soul for a few yeah. seconds. At least. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, that was perfect. Thanks for sharing. So, so yeah, that was that was nice and short. Um, anyone, anyone else? Anyone want to raise everybody? This being recorded and AI might reference it. So, be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, no, no worries, no worries. I, I don't think I'm in danger of that degree of notoriety. We're good. <laughs> I'm putting the link to a New Yorker article uh, about Nick Cave, and he has a great quote in it about the um, process of making art and music. And I think Sky will appreciate it. Yeah, it's kind of about halfway down through the article. Thank you, Leah. No. Awesome. And thanks, thanks for the, the the platform. I stand aside, guys. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, CJ Fletcher, you got a project you want to share? Your microphone needs to be turned on so we can hear you. You're, oh, you're muted, fine. CJ. <laughs> it was so much easier to do the confessional when no one could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. The project that I'm currently working on right now today is my own humanity. Uh -huh. um, Wait, I... sorry, CJ, can, can you speak up a little bit? You're a little muted well, here. I can do that too. How's that? Good. A little better. Okay, sorry. Um, so I'm working on my own humanity. Um, I'm at a graphic designers conference, and one of the speakers' big things was is AI generative art a viable art form? And it was uh, an older woman from Germany who spoke like this and said that nothing was good and it was all just all crap. And I then proceeded to take pleasure in finding holes in all of her hypotheses and opinions and to watch her crumble in front of an audience of other art designers and graphic designers and artists and i felt good and that's not good and that's part of my humanity going away and the ai winning over because i defended it in every fiber of my being and i liked it because i made a german woman shrink away that's my confessional what's the uh what's been the um you said you said you know some of the people at that conference have been you know not too happy with you but what's been the uh what are the what are the counter arguments or what are they upset about? Uh, they're upset that it's too easy and they're upset that it now anyone can really do it. Whereas 20 years ago, you had to actually have a lot of good pen and paper skills and a lot of good, you know, basic foundation learning. And they're mad that a 10 year old can generate a picture um, faster than they can, but haven't really gone to that pivot stance with 
that Eva was talking about two weeks ago about being a prompt engineer and really working and crafting your words to make these this art form different. So I have I'm in a room full of a lot of older artists who haven't thought yet about that other side of creativity and being a creative. And I think they're getting mad about that. I, I do remember when graphic designers were getting mad about uh, a Max because they were no longer cutting and pasting and doing right. layouts. And then I remember that. And, <laughs> and it was the, 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 bait, the one, the biggest debate that happened was, is it art if you're just getting it from someplace else? It's just copying to which it was, well, have you watched a movie in the past 50 years? Um, every auteur has copied another style at one point in time, but we still call them films. And that's what's happening now. We're, we're getting other styles from other places, but we're still the ones that are putting it all together into a format. And that's where she went, ah, I see. Um, well, I'm not, uh, boss. okay, well, is there another question from someone else in the audience? Wow. Wow. I, I find that in our salon, we're in a certain place and then conversations with photographers and designers and art directors and all the people I work with and they're not, they're, they're not quite, they're just not quite shifting and they're not quite ready to shift yet. I think this is a yeah. very scary thing to think about for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Thank you, CJ. Yeah, Jeff, you have something you want to add? Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, so um, I recently hired a, a really good, solid artist to work on um, AI art who was also doing AI art. And I, ga I gave him a task, which I would normally would. And he actually emailed me two days later and said he had to throw in the towel because he couldn't get my request done. So I thought it was really interesting that a really seasoned artist who you know was using Mid Journey and all the different AI tools could not you know create holiday designs for for what I'm doing and I thought that was just interesting so we just wanted uh, to throw that out there. What was he a tra traditional artist that was using AI or was 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 he just someone who was a, an AI artist? No, he's a traditional artist and he uses the obviously the computer for all of his art and he's been doing AI for, you know, five or six months like everybody else, but yeah. he just really had trouble, you know, getting uh, a good output. So, yeah, and you, you might be in that, you might be in that odd situation, you know, it's what you were talking about, that the tools right now are just not quite there. Right, maybe something like that style drop, you know, becomes a tool that that gets you because you've got a very specific output. You and I have talked a bit, so um, right, really interesting though. But again, you know, one for the humans, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. What's that? I was, Jeff, what did Re Rebecca ask? What you asked them to do, and I'm very curious as well. Oh, okay. So um, I what, one of the first offers that we're going to be coming out with is we're going to be doing um, ugly holiday apparel. And I'm looking for styles to be developed, certain styles uh, with that give you, you know, that you can create a custom AI uh, ugly holiday T-shirt, basically. Um, and he had trouble, you know, getting you know, AI, the AI to, you know, generate Santa Claus and doing funny things and riding, you know, riding deer or whatever it is. But he had a, he had trouble, you know, doing that. I'm sure it's possible. I'm sure there's people out there that can do it. It's just that I found it interesting that someone that, you know, is so, such a great artist couldn't, couldn't do it. So it's just interesting. Yeah. One more. Are, we're right are you? Uh, on our Discord group at all, it might be worth uh, putting that out to the Discord community. We have a few people in there that um, do some pretty good work. And see what they. Can oh wow! Do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, join the Discord. Yeah. What last thing? Uh, Jeff, your your request was uh, down to the training data. Both humans and AI were supposed to make things that are beautiful. You asked for something that's, that's gaudy or ugly. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> you, you, need, you need uglier training data. <laughs> I need somebody who's yeah, only paying attention to the, the gaudy things. 
Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, All I, right. I will. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead, Jeff. No, I was going to say, I, I will share when I get something good done. Excellent. All right. Well, yes, yeah, please share and share share what you learned. That's really great. Um, all right. Thank you all very much. Another fantastic salon. Leah, thank you so much. Great to see you again. And Chris, thanks for thanks for joining with Leah. Um, that's exciting to have you here. Um, yeah, so please um, hop into the Discord. Um, we can geek out there. You can ask for questions. You can collaborate. You can make friends. You can... You can make things in mid-journey. You can find out how the robots suck. Um, jump and in here. Uh, if, if you're here in Denver, we're going to go over to Zeppelin great. after this and, and hang out. So uh, we'll have an after party here locally. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, See you on Discord, LinkedIn, and a couple weeks. Wow. It's really to hear you flesh out what you were talking about last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Nice like, job. Yeah,